So next we'll add some text to the poster. And to do so, we'll need to just work with a layers panel uh, before we do that. So first of all, I'm going to lock the hill layer so we don't click on that and any of the elements in there inadvertently. I will turn on the visibility for the family layer. And I would say then that this, this may well be the first time you've seen both those pieces of element combined together. If you wish to, you are more than welcome to scale the trees or move them around and rearrange them as you see fit. Um, I am going to lock the family layer, however, um, and um, I will then need to add my text to the layer called titles right at the top of the stack. It is at the moment locked and it's hidden. So I'm going to unlock it first, turn on its visibility, and you will need to make sure that you left click once on that layer to highlight it so the illustrator knows that when you add text, that's the layer that it will live in. And then we need to go across and pick up the type tool. So over here, I'll left click on the type tool. You'll notice that over on the far right hand side in the properties panel, it has already changed. It's shown us some options for character and paragraph formatting inside of there. So when you're working with text inside of Illustrator, the default font is something called Myriad Pro and it's set to a font size of 12 points. Uh, so if I take my type tool and hover my cursor over the image window, I'm going to hover my cursor in the upper left corner of the artboard. I'm going to click and hold down the mouse, keep it held down and drag and draw out. This rather feels like drawing out a rectangle, to be honest. And then um, it'll occupy most of the width of the artboard in that upper portion and then let go of the mouse. When you do, it will suddenly be filled with text. And this, this is dummy text called lorem ipsum, if you've never encountered this before. So this is Latin and it's used just as a placeholder so that if you wish to format text and get the, the look and the feel of that right, then you have something to work with. We don't in our case. Now it is highlighted. Um, so if you wish to not use it, you can just start typing or hit the delete key on the keyboard and replace it with something else, which in our case is going to be the words uh, embrace life's little. Like so. So that's the size of 12 point text on an A4 poster. And then we need to change the properties of this. Now you can double left click and that highlights a word like every other text editor, or you can click three times and that will select all the text in a paragraph. And as short as this is, as three words, that is still a paragraph. So with it highlighted, we can now change the look of that text. I'm going to go across to my properties panel, just drag that out so we can see this a little bit clearer on screen. From the character menu in here, I'm going to click on the drop down menu and you should see a list of fonts appear inside of here. Now, if you see a blue band that appears across that and asks you that if you want to get started with um, Adobe fonts, then I would say click on the button to say get started. If you don't see that, as mine doesn't in this case, then hover over and left click on find more because it may well be that you need to install a font from Adobe fonts. Now, Adobe Fonts is, is included in your Creative Cloud subscription, and there's, a, there's around about 12,000 fonts that the last count, I believe, that you have access to. And when you click on Find More and you wish to install additional fonts, then they are shown in alphabetical order. So you can scroll down this list. We need to use a font called Alternative Gothic Number 1D. So it is just here. It shows a cloud symbol in there. Now, mine is already installed. So when I hover over the cloud symbol, it will ask me if I want to deactivate. So if you don't have it installed, you should see a tick adjacent to that and telling you you can activate. Left click at that point and it will download and install that font for you. And incidentally, you can install as many fonts as you wish from um, the Creative Cloud as well. But the nice thing is they're all available to scroll through in that really long list inside of there. So as I say, I'm going for alternative Gothic number 1D regular. When I click on that, and then I'm going to change the size of the font in this case, which is shown here. This is font size. I'm going to change that to 30. Now, amongst all the presets in here, 30 isn't one of them. So I'm going to click on 24 points and then go and click on the up arrow to increase that until it reads 30. And then we need to reveal further options in here. So if you don't see everything you're looking for, um, then you can hover your cursor over what's called more options, the three dots, click on that. And it opens a pop out, which includes everything you can see at the moment and everything else in the character panel. And then we need to hover over the capital T's that appear lower down. So this needs to be set to all caps. I'll click on that. And then you can hit the return key to make that pop up disappear. Your text by default will appear left aligned. So under paragraph in here, we're going to change this to align center. And then the text looks a, a little bit sort of spread out. I want this text to look quite 
uh, impactful. So I'm going to tighten the space between all those characters. To do that, you can go to something called tracking and it's shown just here. Now that's supposed to be the, a, a symbol of a capital A and a capital V that are selected with the type tool. So you have to have your type selected to be able to do this. And if I just zoom in a little bit closer so we can see this on screen, just move this panel to the side. I'm going to go to the value here and tap down and that will allow you to reduce the white space between all of the selected characters. So I'll set that to minus 30 in there. So, uh, you know, it's a nice big, you know, kind of bold font uh, is uh, alternative Gothic. And I want to just tighten the space up inside of there as well. And then the very last thing to do is to go up to the fill, click on that and change the color of the text to white. So text, the color of it still is a fill in there. And then I'll hit the escape key on the keyboard. So it's very important that when you finish editing text inside of Illustrator, you hit the escape key because you escape from the text frame. It's a, my best way of remembering that at least anyway. And then it will take you back to your selection tool at the top of the tools panel, and it will select the frame, the container that the text lives inside of. From here, I'll go to view and choose fit artboard in window. And I would suggest then at this stage, hover your cursor over the handles at the bottom and you can drag that up. Now it won't distort your text. It just changes the size of the container, not the actual characters themselves. So just to make that a bit smaller, because if you have a very large text frame, and it's got lots of empty space inside of it, you'll be forever clicking on it by accident. So that's how we can pick up the type tool, create a text frame, type inside of it and format our text. Next, we'll create a duplicate and we'll do some more formatting.